Hello, and welcome to the second episode of our podcast, Trauma, Healing, and Nutrition. The Trauma, Healing, and Nutrition podcast series is sponsored by Repair, a health and disability justice organization based in LA. Learn more about us on our website at repairconnect, that's one word, repairconnect.org. Uh, today's episode is on strawberries <laughs> and, uh, it's hopefully going to be a lot of fun. And I want to first disclaim that, uh, though I'm often going to be sharing information about particular foods, uh, and nutrition. First of all, I'm not an MD or a clinician of any kind. Um, and second, I'm also not a registered dietitian, so I'm not somebody who, as a profession, uh, helps guide people in terms of what should be part of their individual diet. Uh, and so this is meant to be educational information, which I share as part of my nonprofit health education work and uh, also drawing on my background in medical sociology. But again, this is not clinical advice and you should always be in touch with your own healthcare providers when you want individual or personalized information about your nutrition. So with no further ado, I'm glad to focus on strawberries. Um, strawberries are commonly known to have a number of beneficial priorities. Usually in more popular discussions of strawberries, what we see is that they're good for heart health, which they are. And they can also help with blood sugar control, which I think people often find counterintuitive or surprising because strawberries are really sweet. And we tend to have the assumption that if something is sweet, it's not good for your blood sugar. Um, but strawberries have a number of helpful compounds in them uh, in addition to the sugar content that do help actually control and manage blood sugar. So in moderate quantities, they can in some instances be good fruit to eat for people who are diabetic or hypoglycemic or just wanting to do um, diabetes prevention, for instance. I'm going to talk a little bit more, though, about two other areas that strawberries are particularly useful for, um, and those are cancer prevention and taking care of your brain and particularly your memory as you age. So one of the... Uh, to sort of think about what's so helpful or magical about a strawberry besides they're pretty and they taste nice as long as you're not allergic to them. Um, it's useful to introduce a few concepts, and these are going to be multisyllable or multisyllabic scientific words, but don't worry. I'm really happy to explain exactly what they mean or broadly what they mean in some instances. So... One of the reasons that strawberries are so potentially healing for at least a good number of people is because they're rich in a kind of substance or compound known as polyphenols. And polyphenols are essentially a broad term for a particular kind of antioxidant-rich compound. So if you listen to our pilot episode, we talked a bit, or I talked a bit about uh, what an antioxidant is and how it works in your body. I won't completely recap that in today's episode, but I will say um, that antioxidants are substances which help heal, protect, um, or uh, defend our cells against damage. And so taking polyphenols into your body, and again, this is an antioxidant-rich compound that's found in a number of different foods, including strawberries, is a great way to protect lots of different cells within your body. If you're actually reading up about the science of strawberries, you may find terms like flavonoids. And this is basically a subcategory of a polyphenol, right? So if polyphenol is the big umbrella term for antioxidant-rich compounds, then flavonoids is one of the types of, of, polyphenol, um, of polyphenols. And as you might imagine, they're often associated with flavor, and we find them in a lot of different forms of produce and foods. And I'll break it down even a little bit further 
there's a type of flavonoid. Uh, so now we're going from the big category polyphenols to the intermediate category flavonoids to introduce um, a particular specific kind of compound that is a pigment. So pigment is what gives something color. And the pigment is generally known as either an anthocyanin or an anthocyanidin. And the only difference between the two, well, there are actually there are a few differences, but the primary difference between the two is that anthocyanins, the first one, have some sugar and an anthocyanidin cyan, cyan, <laughs> has, um, uh, doesn't tend to have sugar. But what's significant about these little substances is they give foods blue or red color. So if you ever wondered what makes a strawberry so red, it's the anthocyanidins in the strawberry. So what's very cool is that it, the anthocyanidins in the strawberries don't just make the strawberry red. They also are part of why strawberries are healing. So now I want to talk a little bit about why that is, not in much detail, but at least to introduce the subject. So one of the things that we find is that generally when you're consuming more polyphenols, it has a repairing and protective effect for the cell, cells of your body. And we know that the more that our cells are damaged, the more likely they are to become cancerous. Um, but the other area I wanted to talk about is that polyphenols and specifically anthocyanidins, which are what make those strawberries so pretty and red, um, are also associated with reducing what's called cognitive degeneration. And the term cognitive basically refers to thinking in the brain and the processes of your brain. And degeneration is when something is breaking down or falling apart. So when we say cognitive de degeneration, basically what we're just referring to is the ways in which um, processes like memory or speed of thinking about things or the ability to think about complex concepts is functioning at high or low or intermediate levels. And if it's cognitive degeneration, what we're talking about is your, your brain, your intelligence, your memory formation breaking down. So one of the things that we see is that consumption of strawberries has now been repeatedly linked in different clinical studies to reduced cognitive de degeneration, um, generally among human beings as they age. And then there've been some studies that have specifically shown very beneficial effects for aging women. And so knowing that one of the things that you can do to reduce the likelihood or the onset or the severity of conditions like Alzheimer's and dementia is to, as long as it's something that you're otherwise comfortable eating, and again, that's, this means not being allergic to strawberries, that keeping strawberries in your diet is actually one of the best ways to um, maintain brain health, neurological health, as you age. So... I won't try to fully break down today sort of what are some of the ways in which uh, poly polyphenols actually work at the neurological level. I know there are plenty of, I'm sure, science geeks out there like me who like the details, um, but also folks who I think just want the sort of hands-on guidance. So we'll keep this simpler today and just say the basic thing that you want to keep in mind is that because strawberries not only are wonderfully red, but are wonderfully antioxidant rich uh, based on the same compounds that make them so pretty and red, as well as some others. They are among the really helpful substances that you can use to basically maintain your cognitive function as you get older. Um, so I, I want to keep linking each episode as we produce this, con this podcast to um, particular actions you can take, and that's especially easy, easy in this instance, uh, because where strawberry is concerned, the action you can take is to eat them. Um, but I'll say a few things about ways to eat them and what's useful. Um, a common question folks often have is, is it necessary to eat fresh strawberries or are frozen strawberries also good for you? Um, and the answer is that as long as the freezing practices were done correctly, 
um, and safely. Interestingly, unlike cooking, um, we don't have a whole lot of nutrient loss in fruits, some vegetables, but less likely in fruits when we freeze them. So though very fresh strawberries may be just slightly more nutrient rich than frozen ones, um, particularly for convenience, it can be great to have frozen organic strawberries in your freezer, especially, you know, if you're trying to avoid the situation where you buy them and then they're sort of a little overripe and then they're already losing some of their nutrients. So if you want to be sure that you've got a supply of strawberries ready to add into a blender or a Nutribullet in order to make a smoothie, there's nothing wrong with having some frozen organic strawberries uh, accessible to you in a freezer. Um, but fresh strawberries are also wonderful, and there are at least um, a few nutrients that survive a little bit better uh, the fresher uh, the produce item is. So I certainly recommend having them fresh. Some things that are great to do with strawberries, um, in addition to uh, you know one of the easiest and nicest things to do, which is to eat them straight, I like to put them in salads and particularly combine them with leafy greens and some walnuts, which are also, uh, which, which are essentially one of the most antioxidant rich nuts. So that combination of the sort of green fibrous, fibrous vegetables and um, strawberries and organic nuts um, can be really just fan nutritionally fantastic. The nuts give you a little bit of protein and some healthy fats and um, I have different favorite salad dressings, but often with a salad that, like that that's already a little bit like sweet and, and flavorful, I'm happy with just like a little balsamic vinegar, maybe a little bit of salt. I don't necessarily even need oil with it. So it's a great extra way to sort of get some strawberries in your diet and also combine them with other foods that are helpful. There's a saying that and I have really no expertise in traditional Chinese medicine, but in conversation with someone who had a lot, uh, one of the things she mentioned to me once is that there's a saying in traditional Chinese medicine that your plate should be a rainbow, that it should be full of a wide variety of foods and that that is most often most nutritionally helpful and efficient, especially because the different useful nutrients and compounds in foods are often going to work best in combination with each other. So again, I really like that combination of like strawberries, walnuts, or if you dislike walnuts, another nut that's healthy that you enjoy, and some leafy greens because you're getting something that's relatively close to nutritionally complete and not that you won't need other things, but you've got a little protein, you've got plenty of fiber, you've got a huge range of antioxidants, um, and you've got some complex carb carbohydrates and, um, it's just such a wonderful thing to add to your day. But again, there's sort of no wrong here, um, with fresh, clean organic strawberries or frozen organic strawberries. Um, it is good to know that if you cook strawberries, you're going to lose some nutrients. That doesn't mean there won't be any health benefit. And if you really enjoy um, something that's cooked with strawberry, by all means, enjoy it. Um, but when you bake strawberries, for instance, into a muffin or a pie or something like that, just keep in mind that you're going to destroy or lose some of the antioxidants, including um, generally vitamin C, which strawberries are fairly rich in. I will talk more in future podcast episodes about organics and what does it mean to say something is organic and how good is that and what's significant about it. But what I will say for today is that it is important if what you are doing is eating strawberries, not just for pleasure, but for um, the, its antioxidant properties to try to stick to organic or at least non-genetically modified and pesticide-free strawberries whenever possible. Obviously, if you like grow it in your backyard, it won't be certified organic, but... Uh, the cleaner the source, the better, because a lot of useful antioxidants are destroyed in some of our less healthy agricultural pro practices. So having strawberries that were hopefully grown with a clean water source that were grow grown in accordance with certified organic standards um, helps maximize the kinds of health benefits that we've been talking about today. So that's what I have to say about strawberries. Um, before we sign off today, I want to just thank um, my good friend and colleague, Samia Bono, who uh, 
helped me get around the fact that I'm not even remotely tech savvy and said, it's really not going to be hard to launch this podcast. So uh, for our pilot episode, and again today, she's been sitting here with me and uh, managing the equipment and all of the details that go into getting a podcast off the ground. And she already does her own amazing interfaith and healing and trauma-focused and happiness-focused work here in Los Angeles. So I want to just especially express some love and gratitude her way for taking the time and sharing her not inconsiderable skills. Um, and you are welcome to connect with Repair a number of ways. I shared our web address at the beginning of this episode. And again, that's repairconnect.org. And you will see links on our website for Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram. And we're glad to be connected with you there as well. There's also a sign up for a mailing list. Um, and being connected with us on social media is a great way to get announcements when new episodes are launched. And if you are accessing this uh, podcast through iTunes, then uh, Samia has also told me I should encourage you to uh, give us five stars if you are so inclined, because I, I understand that will help more people find the podcast. And of course, you can also share links to the episodes, and we're always really happy when more people find our way find their way here. So, listeners, thank you so much for uh, tuning in today to learn a little bit about the healing properties of strawberries. Join us for our next episode titled Hunger is Trauma. Thank you again. <laughs>